Well, I'm joined now by my special guest for this week, and it really is generally an immense pleasure to uh, welcome to Rock Pose Roulette, Mr. James Christian. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm very well indeed. It's uh, nice to get another member of House of Lords on the show, having had, um, as people are uh, very much aware on the show, having had Jimmy Bell on the show twice, it's uh, a real pleasure and honour to have you on the show, finally. All right. Well, you already had the better half, so now you got me. <laughs> Before we dive into stuff, uh, Jimmy uh, nagged me, said, when you speak to James, you make sure that you tell him to get House of Lords over to the UK soon. So so that's I'm, I'm following the orders now from Jimmy, uh-huh. and I'm going to nag you now, please, please get House of Lords back out to the UK as soon as possible. You know, to, to, from your mouth to God's ears, I want to be there in, in the UK also. We had a tour set up on the last time we uh, we toured for big money, but because the tour got moved, um, I wasn't feeling well. Um, we had to move it to to a date where I was feeling better, and we couldn't. We we rescheduled the whole tour, but the UK all the dates wouldn't work um, for for the we had open. So it made no sense to just do like one show in the UK and then do the rest over in, in uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. So this time around, we're going to start it in the UK, fly from you know, fly directly into Heathrow, and then just do a, a straight week there. So that's our plan. Oh, superb! It's going to. Um, I mean, I've been a fan since the first album, and I can't believe it's uh, all the way back in 1988 when that came out. It uh, it doesn't yeah. seem that long ago, to be honest to me. Yeah, it's a long time. It is indeed, and it's uh, <laughs> House of Lords is, is one band which I've it's they're on my bucket list because for a million reasons it's one of the few bands I've never managed to get to see live. I've either been working away or there's there's been some other hiccup in, in the system to stop me seeing you guys. Hence hence the nagging. Well, you got to change that. You know, just, life is short, so the next time we're out there, you got to make it a point to come out and see the group. Oh, I certainly will. I mean, the closest I get to seeing you, I, I obviously saw you with, uh, with Robin at Fire Fest last year, um, mm-hmm. which, as I was just explained to Robin on the phone before I, uh, I started speaking to your good self, um, it was great seeing the both of you up there because you obviously were having a, um, a whale of a time and really enjoying yourselves. Oh, yeah. That that was a lot of fun. And, you know, playing bass for Robin, that was the first time I played bass since I stopped playing bass uh, when I joined House of Lords. Prior to that, I was I, st- I was actually playing bass in some groups, but um, this was a lot of fun just to go out there and, and do backgrounds for her and play bass guitar. I absolutely had a blast. It certainly showed. Now, one of the, obviously the main reasons that you've come on the show today is to talk about the new solo album, uh, Lay It All On Me, uh, mm-hmm. the first solo album since 2004. What's, uh, what's made you uh, leave it so long to bring another one out? Well, I've been really busy with House of Lords. As you know, mm. we put out quite a, quite a few albums. We've been busy as a band. We haven't been slacking off and just like, you know, uh, touring on the the past. I, I always wanted to make House of Lords um, a band that could always tour on new records. That's why um, we always go out whenever we have a brand new record to promote. So that's been keeping me very, very busy. Robin keeps me extra busy doing her stuff. And so uh, when Serafino asked me if I would uh, consider doing another solo record, I thought, well, I don't have anything written. I don't even have anything in mind. But, it, you know, the timing was right. I just finished Big Money, so I had the time off. And I'm really glad that I did because I didn't realize that I had so much um, a reserve of uh, ideas for a solo record. It really never occurred to me, but it really just kept pouring out. Well, I say, I mean, I really, really enjoy uh, the record. But, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I thought I was going to enjoy it anyway, so I enjoyed your, your first two solo albums. And you have such a distinctive vocal style, um, and it's uh, it's a vocal style which I, I certainly enjoy. And talking about the tracks on the album, I mean, I would probably go, my favourite track on it is probably Sincerely Yours. Wow. But you know what? That it's one of one of the ones I liked. Also, it was actually one of the first ones we had written, and um, there it was just some some parts of it reminded me of Yes. I don't know why, but it just remind. I guess the chorus. Yeah. If you listen to the way the chorus was, it kind of had that early Yes sound to it, and but then it goes away and it and it goes into a, a different um, a different groove. But uh, in, in the storyline of Sincerely Yours. 
which in a day and age when uh, people kind of don't write letters anymore, they use email, I thought it was appropriate <laughs> to bring it back into a different realm. And, and you know, because people don't do that anymore. Sincerely yours is usually something you sign on a letter. Or they, or they um, write in that awful text speak, which I absolutely can't go. stand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just thought it was a proper, it, it, you know, the storyline behind Sincerely Yours really was, um, uh, it's not that it's unique, but it, uh, it made you think about what it's like for people uh, fighting for our countries and, and just waiting for those little, little letters of anything they can get that brings them closer to home. Now, would I be right in saying that you um, did all the um, instrumentals on the album? Um, not all of them. I played all the keyboards. Um, I played all the acoustics. I played all the bass. And so, but basically that, and the background vocals are Robin and myself. We always do all the backgrounds. Uh, I could never do it without her because she has that level of high range that brings a texture of a mm. background vocal. It just ties it together. And, there, you know, some people who have high voices, uh, their mixes never have that uh, blend. So um, when we work together on background vocals, we just really can create some nice walls. And obviously Robin's doing the same thing on the, the, the upcoming New House of Lords album, I believe. Yes, absolutely. Uh, she's actually going to do a duet with me for the first time on a House of Lords record. Um, it's a song called uh, Enemy Mine, and uh, it's a terrific song. And, uh, you know, Robin did do a little little, little short vocal thing on um, Cartesian Dreams, mm. and um, it was just a short little thing we did with, um, and I can't remember the name of the song. I'm sorry. I've, I've written so many songs that we just some of them just go right by me. But uh, at this, this particular one, I have a blank on. But she did do a vocal thing on on uh, one of the songs there. What? But uh, on this, this album, she's going to do, you know, the same amount of backgrounds that she always does with me. It really, it just gives House of Lords its, its definition. Well, I was going to say, it's, um, I mean, certainly all the House of Lords, they, they have a very fullness of sound, um, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. There's, yeah, uh, there's, I, there's such a depth I, to, to the music. Um, certain albums you hear from other bands which, don't get me wrong, are very good albums, but it's like there's almost a level missing. And although you might not know on a House of Lords album what it is it's filling in, whether it's, uh, it, for instance, Robin or what have you, there is something there which, which just adds to the maybe the richness of the sound. Well, you know, I had an album that we did that was actually the very first House of Lords record. I'm sorry, second House of Lords record. And my background singers were Jeff Scott Soto, Robin Zander, Mike Tramp, and um, one of the guys from Trickster. That was my background singers for the album. Now, that's a great lineup of background singers. Oh, hell yeah. So, you know, and, and, and the blend was good, but we really had to work it, you know, because, you know, you, you want certain things to sound a certain way. Now, there's something to be said for having that, but then there's also something to be said for having somebody like Robin who can be a chameleon with her voice and change it in so many ways. So between what I do and what she does, we do it enough times, and we we do it at different positions of the mic, like up front, uh, a few steps back to the side. We create the illusion that there are more than just two singers, because if you just keep recording two singers over and over and over, you're going to get two singers over and over and over. You know, you've got to you've got to learn how to uh, make the voices more interesting on each take, not perfect. Absolutely. One thing that Jimmy brought up, which I think is a is a very fair point for um, House of Lords, um, when he was talking about about the fans, is that um, they're not just hammering for the old stuff. They really, really want to hear the new stuff as well, because obviously yes. some bands come on and people only want to hear the back catalogue and maybe only one track off the new album. Yet with a House of Lords release, you, you want to hear everything. This is so true. You know, and, and I can say that, you know, if you went to a Journey concert, what material would you want to hear? I know what I'd want to hear, and it's not because I don't want to hear new material. It's just that old material was so good mm. that that's, that's what draws you to it. But the, I, I, you have a point there with the House of Lords stuff. We do stuff from the first three albums prior to uh, Jimmy Bell and, and uh, BJ Zampa, but we do just as many songs as the new albums because the song, the writing level has always stayed the same 
has always gotten better, and on this new record, it's even gotten better than that. So uh, I'm I'm proud of that because we're not living off the past. We're we're, we're writing for the future. Have you got any plans? Obviously, uh, as we're talking about House of Lords going tour, are, are you any plans to go out and do any solo dates at all with the new album? I, I was asked to do that already a couple of times to do some solo dates, but the only way that I think that it would be appropriate for me to do it would be uh, an acoustic set. You know, just going out and doing something very intimate that way. That was because, going to be my next comment, funnily enough. Yeah. yeah, because all of those songs were written on acoustic guitar, and you wouldn't know it listening to some of them because they, you know, they kick ass. Mm. But they were written first on an acoustic and then translated into uh, what, it, what it became on, on the CD. But, uh, yeah, that is a possibility. I would do it if it made sense. I mean, you know... I, I wouldn't want it to take away from all the other things that I do, like you know, working with House of Lords, planning our tours, and um, and whatever else has to happen in my life. Um, if if somebody, if there were people that really would are interested in seeing a James Christian acoustic set, then I would do it. Sure. I'm sure. To be honest, James, I'm sure there are plenty of people who would want to see it. Uh, I, at uh, there was a uh, festival over here in April, H uh, R H A O R, and. Uh, Kit Winger was there and did just a purely acoustic set. And I know there was a lot of muttering before he did it that um, was that wise. But on, on hearing it, I, th I think he pretty much blew people away. And it, it is nice, actually, to occasionally just hearing uh, just a purely acoustic set. I think it's almost a cleansing of the palate. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I've seen Kip's uh, acoustic set, and it's fabulous. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it really is. I, I, I'm, you know, he plays a 12-string guitar that he's got uh, EQ'd a certain way that really fills up the uh, the room, and he also has still has a terrific voice. So between that combination, he's a great guy, uh, very personable, and he puts on a great acoustic set. So I've never done it that way, but if I had to do it, that's the way I would like to do it. Well, James, I've taken up more than enough of your time because I imagine you've probably got a thousand one interviews to do, and everybody's bugging at you. I, I guess I guess that is um, one of the shortcomings of being uh, so good at what you do. Well, you know what? Keep them coming is all I say because you know I love the fact that people are still interested. You know, and you, and I, today for some reason they booked me uh, thirty minutes in between every every thirty minutes another interview. So I'm really moving quickly. <laughs> Well, James, it's been a real pleasure to finally have you on the show. I say, I, as I said at the start, I'm a massive fan, and fingers crossed we will see you over in the UK very, very soon. Thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, Neil. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.